these students, they're going to be physics majors, right? We invited everybody. So okay. physics majors, physics lovers, everybody. <laughs> so Oops. hopefully we'll just get. So we got a chance to convert all of them. Yeah, gotcha. there you go. So physics lovers is just everybody, right? Everyone likes physics. Who doesn't like physics? Absolutely. Heck yes. Physics all the way. It's okay. We clearly we're trying to convert you all, but um, we're just glad that you're here. This is for all prospective tech students. And so, uh, Dr. Sessions, are you going to kick us off? It looks like we're, I guess it's four o'clock. Or do you? Yeah, I, I should turn it over to you. So. Yeah. So, should we start off with? Um, should we start off just with brief introductions of of the people who are kind of pre presenting, so that people that are here kind of know what's <laughs> what they're getting into. Um, typically, we will do. Uh, I'll, I'll Well, I'll welcome everybody to the session and then introduce uh, the speakers. I'm afraid I know only know some of you guys from the uh, physics club, so I might have you introduce yourselves. But um, I certainly know who Dr. Sessions and Dr. Sonnenfeld are, so I can do that. Okay. Perfect. All right. Perfect. I am going to record this session. Does anybody object? Okay. That's fine with me. All right. Oh, uh, Naomi, will you make me a host so that I can record it? Or can you record it? Uh, yeah, I have it recording. Looks like it is recording. Oh, perfect. Okay. All right. Well, welcome everybody to our third installment of te uh, Tech Spotlight, which is a new program we're running through the New Mexico Tech Peer Mentors Program. This um, event is an opportunity for New Mexico Tech uh, faculty, staff, departments, students, special interest groups to present what they do at Tech and how it might be of interest to incoming students. And today we were lucky enough to get Dr. Sharon Sessions and Dr. Richard Sonnenfeld from the physics department to join us. And they have invited the New Mexico Tech Physics Club. So I'm really grateful to have all of you here and um, if, uh, the Phys Physics Club folks want to introduce themselves. I think now would be a great time. Okay. I guess I'll go first. Um, sorry, Steve. Um, I'm Anna. I'm the president of the Physics Club. Um, I guess I have all my officers here, which is a great thing, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, I am Steve. I am the vice president of the Physics Club. I'm also a senior physics major. So this is my last year. Hi, I'm Fernando. I'm the secretary of the physics club. Um, I'll be entering, I'll be entering my senior year, but I'll be taking the sophomore level classes for physics. So, okay. Hi, I'm Janine. Um, I am the treasurer of physics club and I'm also um, gonna be entering my sophomore year of physics classes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Aiden. I'm the uh, media director for, or media member officer for the physics club, and I am also entering my sophomore year of physics classes. Uh, my name's Aaron. I'm the former <laughs> physics club president. Um, graduated, so if you guys have any questions, hi Stephen, uh, about <laughs> tech or what things you can do with a physics major or whatever, I can answer that. Awesome. Thank you, and thanks everybody for for being here. Um, we have some some guests, um, and I guess the way that that to think about this is go ahead. If you have questions, um, you can go ahead and enter them in the group chat. Uh, and um, it, it's also if you I th I think with the number of people that we have if it gets chaotic then we'll have to just use the chat but if 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 you'd like to just answer ask questions in real time that would be okay too I believe um, I I guess I wanted to before we started just also acknowledge that there is kind of a national um, protest happening in solidarity with with the black community shut down STEM and shut down academia. And, and I think that these are very important movements. And, and it, this was something that we kind of contemplated how to deal with this, with um, this particular spotlight, um, being that this is kind of the day that this is happening. And um, 
I, I, what we'd like to do is acknowledge that it's happening and that it's a very important movement. We decided to go ahead and hold this, um, this spotlight because it's important to welcome all new people. Some of you might be members of, of underserved groups and we wanted to welcome you to the New Mexico Tech family and just know that we are in solidarity with the community. The campus is planning to have some events in the fall to, to recognize and honor um, what's going on in our country right now, um, assuming that we can do this when, if, assuming people can come back together again. So I just wanted to, to make sure that that was something that, that you were aware of and that we, we are aware of and that um, we're, we're not dishonoring the movement. We're trying to help bring the, the groups into, into um, STEM and academia and the tech physics family. So, so I just wanted to acknowledge that and thank you for allowing me to do so. Um, what we kind of planned on doing was I'm going to give you a very, very super, super brief overview of some of the spotlights in terms of some, some data and th some things that happen in, in the physics department. Um, I uh, don't want to take too much time because talking to, um, asking questions, leaving lots of room for asking questions is important. Talking to our physics club members, like that's probably going to be the coolest thing you do today. Just saying. <laughs> It's going to be one of the coolest things that I do today, um, and, and, and hopefully I'll be, have an opportunity to talk with you guys. Um, and also, Dr. Sonnenfeld has some, some pretty cool things to share with you in real time, which are more interesting than sharing a slideshow. But it is kind of, we do have some pretty, pretty special things about our department that I wanted to just highlight. So can, it, can everybody see my screen okay? Yes. Yep. yep. No, it's okay. Yes. All right, and, uh, so I'm going to I'm going to interrupt for just one second to to welcome uh, Ms. Kwan and uh, uh, Ms. Mr. Ochoa, I think, uh, who joined a little late, and you didn't miss much. We're just getting launched here with uh, two professors and a bunch of current tech students. Uh, okay, so I just thank you. okay. Go on, please. Thank you for doing that, Dr. Sonnenfeld. I'm not able to watch the participants. So this, this image is actually a very cool image um, and, and kind of also spotlights some of the things our department is, in, is doing. This is taken from um, out of a, a G5 aircraft um, at 47,000 feet above um, Central America that this happened in August and September of last semester where um, members of our physics department actually um, basically ran a field program out of Costa Rica to learn more about the organization of tropical deep convection. And I actually took this. So I was, I was fortunate enough to participate in this. And there was undergraduates and graduate students involved from tech. So um, this isn't something that happens super often, but this is one of the very, very cool opportunities that you can have um, by coming to tech. Um, I, I mean, our, our graduates are successful. Um, if you didn't already know, uh, College Factual, these are, this is uh, where our department is ranked in the top 1% of best value and most focused uh, across the nation. These are, these are this year's numbers, so that's a pretty exciting honor to have. Um, we also have some pretty impressive statistics with respect to what our graduates do. So almost half of our graduates earn advanced degrees after within eight years of, of getting a bachelor's degree from our department. 20%, um, one in five, earn PhDs in physics. And just to give you some kind of idea of the magnitude of how impressive that is, if you look at the average um, rate of people that graduate from from New Mexico Tech with a bachelor's of science who get go on and earn a PhD that's almost nine percent so that's where at least double more than double that and it's also important to notice that according to an NSF report the conversion of bachelor's degrees to PhD rates is at New Mexico Tech is the highest of all public institutions so we have a really amazing program that very well prepares our students to go on to graduate school. And, and I, can, I can actually speak to that because I 
I earned my bachelor's degree in physics at New Mexico Tech quite some time ago, but I can say that I was well prepared to go on to graduate school. And even if you don't necessarily, not everybody has to, I mean, half of people go on to earn advanced degrees, half of people go on and get jobs. And, and we have a really amazing reputation with employers um, as far as our, our undergraduates go. Um, I mean, if you say you're, you're a graduate at New Mexico Tech, then sometimes that's actually enough. Um, and so just this is a very small sample of people that, that hire um, our graduates. Uh, this, this warrior head is actually a, kind of a, it's the local school mascot, but a lot of our students can go on to be teachers or they can do um, engineering jobs, research positions. Uh, there's, there's a lot and I'll, I'll allow the, I'll give the students a chance to think about them, but, it, but it's a very prestigious and well-respected degree. Um, and you can do a lot more than just physics. Um, our, our classes, there's, there's not, like I said, I'm not going to clutter the slide with lots of bullet points, but we have some pretty special things about our, our department. The class sizes tend to be small once you get past the, the freshman physics classes. Uh, we also have a lot of very, very unique courses, so a lot of hands-on um, work, laboratories, computational physics. Um, Dr. Sonnenfeld can speak more to this, this circuit diagram, and I, I believe that's from a, a electromagnetism measurements lab. Yeah, um, so, so students, well, we make sure that all students have basic uh, lab skills, and uh, in particular, uh, students at the junior level <clears throat> take an electronics lab, and those who feel, who love it, well, they love it more, and those who are scared of it, we get them through it too, and they often end up loving it. Um, and and so so we certainly have that as part of our program. We also have research opportunities. That circuit is actually for a lightning measuring instrument, and uh, the point is it was built, designed, and built by uh, tech undergraduates. And um, and so you you if you work with a professor, you can get a lot of practical skills as well. Uh, thanks, Dr. Sessions. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And and this poster, I know you can't read the fine details, but I wanted to put this here because, I mean, okay, so the, the title, Comparison of Power from a Photovoltaic Module and a Wind Turbine, this was actually a poster that looks beautiful and was created in a in a freshman lab class. So there's a, we have a climate and sustainability course. It's a two-semester course. Um, the first semester is kind of background information and more lecture type stuff. The second semester is lab courses. Um, Anna probably recognizes this because yeah. she was <laughs> she was one of the people that put this together. I'm the one who pretty much designed the poster. It was a really fun project, though. Would recommend. And very very hands on. Lots of lots of good research experience. Your first year at tech, yeah. right? It was my freshman year and I took your climate and sustainability class and I thought it was actually really interesting, even though I'm an astrophysics major, like delving into some atmospheric stuff is also really cool. Well, I'm glad you did, so. Yeah, well, I've heard that exoplanets have atmosphere, so, you know. <laughs> Indeed. In, in fact, there's a lot of, go ahead, Anna. Oh, I was gonna say planets do have atmospheres. Right. And we do have some students who have done some research that have actually had faculty from atmospheric, the atmospheric side and the astrophysics side, just because they're looking at exoplanet atmospheres. So it's a very nice complementary. And, and as the, the last bullet says, um, a lot, our, our research specialties in the department are atmospheric physics and astrophysics. And of course, um, we have a very strong regular physics. So if, if neither of those really float your boat, if you're interested in condensed matter or optics or any of these other things, I mean, when I went to graduate school, I actually did condensed matter theory. Um, I, I was excited about whatever physics class I took most recently, and that's what I ended up doing. Um, but equipped with the problem solving skills that you learn as a physicist, you can, you can meander and, and focus on different things. And I, I study hurricane formation now. And in terms of research, um, we have um, we have a really it, it, undergraduates are really an important part 
of, of the research that happens in our departments. We do have a very strong graduate program, but the faculty feel very strongly about uh, incorporating undergraduates in our research and very regularly do, as Dr. Sonnenfeld mentioned, the, the circuit on the previous page was actually designed by undergraduate researchers. Um, they, they participate in some of the lightning research through some of that instrumentation design. Here's, here's a weather balloon that is um, being prepared at the at, Lang at Langmuir Lab, which is specializes in atmospheric research. It's located at the top of the Magdal Magdalena Mountains, um, where the Magdalena Ridge Observatory is being built. This is actually an artist rendition. It, it's not fully, fully built yet, but there are lots of undergraduates that work for MRO, and so that's a very important um, important research area. Um, this, this is another image from the field program that happened um, last fall out of Costa Rica that was looking at um, tropical convection and the organization of tropical convection. Uh, one of our faculty members studies the atmospheres of gas giant planets and here's some simulations that he's done um, of the pole at, on Saturn. Um, but, but, but the main point is we do a lot of cool research and, and certainly for those of you that are on here, I, I encourage you to ask any questions about what's going on. But the point that I wanna make is, is that there's amazing opportunities as an undergraduate, potentially even as early as your freshman year to participate in research. Um, our students are, are incredible and um, many of them participate in the, in, um, the physics club. And the physics club is really heavily involved in, in outreach. So the, the photo on the left is actually a, a figure, an image that from a math and science night at, at our local middle school. And you can see it's very well attended and it's, it's hard to see what's all going on on this, on this table, but lots of students, lots of middle school kids are, are very being exposed to the craziness of physics and some of our physics club members are are there to explain and, and show them some cool things. And, you know, they also build ballistics because um, ballistics are cool. <laughs> and and uh, here's a here's a nice picture of some of the things that they do for for entertainment. And and kind of with that, I think I'm going to if the physics club members want to add anything, um, I'll let you guys take it from there. Um, I guess I can talk a little bit about what the club does very briefly. Um, basically, uh, the club does a lot of outreach, as you see in the picture on the left. Um, we do a lot of demos for middle schoolers and just prospective students and club fair days, and that's pretty fun. But we also hang out bi-weekly um, to just hang out, and sometimes we do movie nights, sometimes we do homework nights, just to hang out and chill, de-stress from all your regular classes and homework. We also take members to conferences occasionally, which uh, physics conferences I think are really important. Um, you don't have to be a physics major to be coming with us or anything like that. You just have to be a member or show up to meetings and stuff. And physics conferences, you get to go to different states. For example, we went to Denver uh, last semester, and then we also went to Salt Lake City, Utah, and I've heard before I was part of the club, they went to District of Columbia, and they all sound really fun. And you get to um, travel with us and learn about new physics and research topics and different fields of physics like geophysics, biophysics, and it's really cool. Um, and it's also really just a chance to make friends outside of classes. So you're not just like holed up in your dorm room all day you actually get to interact with people and um, have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, I, I definitely think that going to conferences is probably one of the biggest draws to the club. Um, I know this coming fall semester, we will be in Albuquerque. So luckily it's pretty close if that happens. Um, and then in the spring semester, we will be taking students to California, to my hometown, actually, Sacramento. Um, we typically try to do one conference per semester, and we'll take anywhere between seven to 12 people. Um, 
and it's basically all expenses paid as much as we can and it's just it's great i mean uh aaron got to meet and take a picture with kip thorn at the last conference we went to signed um, my book that one's floating around here somewhere he's still giddy about it <laughs> um but yeah, it, it really is great. And we also do Ballistics Day. Uh, yeah, there you go. Signed his, signed his math or his physics book. Yep. <laughs> um, but we do Ballistics Days where once, a, once per semester, we'll go down into the mud bog uh, near campus, near the observatory that's on campus, and we'll just kind of hang out and generally blow stuff up safely. <laughs> Um, we have a, Usually we blow ourselves up, it happens. <laughs> that has not happened yet. Um, <laughs> we have the massive air cannon that's in our, our physics club room. That's the picture you see there. And uh, yeah, we're always working on new stuff. Um, I think it was maybe a year and a half or two years ago, we put together a rail gun. Um, and I think this semester we're going to be working on a four inch diameter vacuum cannon that will shoot things at Mach 1-ish. So that's generally what we do. Uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions or if either of the other ones want to talk. What's, what's being shot out of the gun? Uh, so I believe that is a bag of flour and then on top of the bag of flour was some sort of a projectile. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I, I was there. This is, this is Richard Sonnenfeld. Um, so in the distance, so there's several things you can see about that. <clears throat> yeah, there was a lot of wadding in there. But uh, in, in the far distance, there's that green thing. And that's a small melon. Uh, and... Uh, and, uh, and, you know, since you know something, you know, well, if you know anything about physics, you know that things sort of move in an arc, right? But um, you, you kind of look and that stuff's all in a line. It hasn't really arced over yet. Maybe the melon is starting to, but the point is it's that all that stuff is still rising. So that, that shot had a lot of range. Um, yeah, and so what I, I want to do actually what I have noticed is there's now about nine students on besides the physics club students. And so I would like to mention that, so the, particularly for people who came later, there's two professors, there's me, uh, Richard Sonnenfeld and Dr. Sessions. And then we have a bunch of physics club students um, who are waving at you now, there they're waving, <laughs> okay. And, and so that you can really ask them what it's like to be a student since, I can't really tell you what it's like to be a student. I was a student, even though I could be your grandfather, and I still remember, but, um, uh, but you can talk to current students. So I think um, I'm ready to do some demos, but we want to give you guys a chance to ask questions. So I think we should hush for a second and maybe encourage anybody to unmute and ask some questions. Uh, I believe uh, Mary and Hannah asked what the experiment is and outcomes. Do you mean for the air cannon or the physics club photo to the left? Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I'll quit touching uh, it. Because the... I think well, so uh, yeah, so the air cannon, that's just for fun. It's just something we like to do because physicists like to blow things up. Uh, <laughs> and especially at tech, we're very known for that. We can't exactly go uh, to the bomb range and blow stuff up with explosives, but that's about as best as we can do. Uh, we we got um, a gnome from like the dollar store, <laughs> and we launched it three or four times a couple hundred yards, and it didn't break. So we'll just like find things to throw into it and see how far it goes and yeah, it's a uh, like cantaloupes pineapples it makes the fruit so much more tender as long <laughs> as you don't as long as you don't mind like a little floor spice it's okay right and yeah mary said sounds like several things were packed in there to shoot out that's right 
Yeah, there's at least a, there's a, it looks like maybe there's a, a melon and a head of cabbage is what I recall, maybe. Uh, they're fairly that, aerodynamic. And that's a, that's a bag of flour too, right? Yeah, that was sort of for packing, you know, to get a good seal. Oh, okay. Good air, you know. Yeah. And so the Fish Club also has a trebuchet. Have you guys, has the current club fired their trebuchet at all? We're working on it. Uh, we, uh, Emertech actually kind of yanked our trailer, but we got it worked out. We just need to have them weld it back on. Uh, okay. We're working on it. <laughs> so w perhaps we should tell people, and we assume that all, all you guys know Zoom really well because everybody's using it, but if you don't, um, maybe actually, Stephen, you want to tell them how to bring up the chat window so so people who don't want to talk can chat. Uh, yeah, down at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a list of things. There's a chat bubble there you can press, or you can also just press uh, Alt H, and that'll bring it up. So let's give people a chance to do that and see if uh, anybody uh, want, has to something they want to chat on. Okay. Should I, so I just exited full screen. Do, do you want me to, is it time for me to stop sharing or should I keep that up? Probably you should stop and we can let, that way we can see people and yeah. There yeah. we go. Oh, there's everybody. Well, so uh, we assume you're being shy, but we're really glad you're here. Shall I do some demos? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so this is what the physics club likes to do. Um, I'm fortunate that I have, uh, you know, we have all these resources that we can share with the physics club. Um, actually, um, let's also tell students how to do full screen. So if I, if I stop talking, then it will go back to little. So can we tell them how to make the, the, my screen big? So go to speaker view. And when Dr. Sonnenfeld is talking, then you can right click on your mouse button and and choose pin video and that will pin his screen um, so you can so you can see that he has toys to play with and and if somebody else starts talking his toys will still be the main thing that you view okay so I'll start talking and I can't see myself but you guys can try it so what is the alt alt click so I'll keep uh, talking um, so right click right -click. You'll, you'll right click right click and push pin video okay so did you guys can you guys see my toys now yes okay i'll do i'll do i'll just talk a little more for the people who are learning how to do it and um and what you should see here is okay there's my hand and there's just a little piece of metal okay so we're going to start slow we're going to work we're going to work our way up to superconductors so there you go so don't go away but we're gonna, we're gonna, this is all about magnetism, which is certainly a big physics thing. So, okay, so I'm just gonna start here with, and I hope somebody, uh, um, uh, you know, I, I hope you guys are gonna participate a little. So you got their coil there. Would anybody like to type in what they think that coil is? And if our guests don't, then somebody in the physics club will. But what do you think, what do you think I'm a physicist that's gonna do with a coil or wire? Generate electrons. Okay, good. Yes. Right. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make an electromagnet, okay? So this thing is called a solenoid, which if you've ever had a car, they have solenoids, and this is what they do. So I'm gonna suddenly put some current through it, you know, and all I did was flick a switch, and that was kind of fun. And that's kind of what you could do. Okay, so that's fine. So now I've got this thing here, and um, I'll, I can bring it up close. Okay, so that's another electromagnet, and you can hear it hum if I turn it on. And you can also kind of tell that it's an electromagnet if I hold this piece of iron up here, and then I turn it on. Okay, so that's an electromagnet. But, but you already know that physicists love projectiles. 
So we're going to get into we're going to get into the projectiles here. So let's take this piece of iron off, okay? And let's let's put a little ring on here. See, this is a little ring. You notice that ring's not probably not a magnet, right? Because it looks like it's made of aluminum, right? Okay, so I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to flick a switch, and it jumped up. Maybe not too thrilling. There we go, right? Oh, it, yeah, in fact, if I try to put it back, I can't. Okay, so now I turn it off. But that wasn't really exciting enough because we want things to go further. So let's put this piece of iron up there. And maybe I should get a little further away. <laughs> and then maybe I'll tilt up a little bit because I kind of think it's going to go up. Okay, so now let me put it on. And let me flick the switch. That was better. <laughs> okay. All right. And of course, you know, that if one piece of iron is good, maybe two pieces is better. It'll probably fall over. Yeah, it's gonna fall over, so I'm not gonna do that. I could do it this way though. Play is important in physics. Oh, and no, that won't work. Okay, that's all right. So we'll just do it again though, because experiments should be reproducible and it's fun. So I'm gonna do it again. So that's good. Okay, so, uh, you know, I said experiments should be reproducible, so hang on. So you can speak up, by the way, if there's anything you want me to do. So, you know, so that, you know, so that worked. So here I got it. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to put that on there. Okay. Uh-oh. I'm going to try that again. I'm going to move that piece of iron. So here we got this piece of metal. Uh-oh. All right. Let's get up close here. Oh, this is embarrassing. Uh-oh. Oh, well, I have another one here. Let me put that one on. Oh, that one works. Wait a minute. They should both work. Uh-oh. Okay, I got these two things here. They're both the same. This one seems to work. And this one here is really boring. And so this makes me really stressed out because I'm trying to show you that physics works and like it doesn't seem to work half the time. Okay, so Mr. Ocella thinks it's awesome. I think it's awesome. And so does Sarah, she thinks it's awesome, but half of it doesn't work. So now I'm asking you, can you help me? I'm sad and I'm embarrassed. Have I screwed up? Does physics not work half the time? Are those different materials? Great, it's the same material, they're both aluminum. Oh, Tony, Mr. Arendt, look what he said. The ring is broken. Okay, nothing up my sleeve. Here's the other one. Where does it go? There it is. It's broken. Why should why should that matter? It's mostly there. It's mostly there. Why? Like, I mean, like, I, if it was a dollar bill and it had a corner out of it, I could still spend it. All right, let's try the broken one though. Okay. All right, here's the here's the not broken one. Okay, here's the broken one. It's broken. I wonder why. Anybody know? Oh, look at this! Somebody said open circuit. Yes! High five. Wait a minute. High five. Okay. <laughs> All right. Awesome. That's it. Okay. So that's science, right? Is like figuring that out, right? Okay. That's cool. All right. So I got, I got another demo. You guys are great. You're ready. You're ready. Okay. So uh, what have I got here? Um, So I got I got a thermos here. 
I got a thermos. See, where's my, there's my thermos. Okay. And I got a coffee cup. And I'm going to pour a nice cup of coffee. Oh, wait a minute. That doesn't seem to be coffee. What is it, guys? Let's see. Let me show you again here. All right. Look at that. It looks like it's a liquid. The magic juice. Okay. I don't know. It's not coffee. Oh, it's liquid nitrogen. Yeah. Somebody got that. Marion Han Nonzon. I can't see your whole name, but Marion Han, way to go. Okay. So what I got here is liquid nitrogen. And what I also got here is boring black pieces of ceramic here. So I got um, these little black ceramic discs here. And I'm going to touch them with my fingers, even though I'm not supposed to. I think it's somewhat poisonous, but, you know, I'll wash my hands. Okay, so I got these boring black discs. And uh, what have I got? I got magnets. I said I was going to do magnets. I got lots of magnets. I got lots of magnets. And some of them are even painted gold. So this one here is gold. There we go. I'll just put it there. So, and I'm going to try to zoom in so you can see it real well. So let's see how close I can get. There you go. Can you see my little gold magnets there? So I hope you made it the full size of your screen. And I'll just take a, take a second. Uh, bones on. Okay, Tony, uh, Mary, uh, Bones on is a guy who's figuring out the open circuit and the liquid nitrogen. Okay, so um, so I got a magnet. So I'm not going to add liquid nitrogen because everything's better with liquid nitrogen. And um, yeah, I hope you figured out how to zoom this. So I'm talking. So you can what right click? Is that right? To pin it? Is that right, Doctor Sessions? Yes. So you right click on and say pin. All right. So all I'm doing all I'm doing is making things cold. I'm having fun though because I can watch all the steam. Can you see some of the steam? I hope you can see some of it. Well, it's not really steam, is it? And actually, it's bubbling. Right? It's boiling furiously. There we go. All right, does anybody notice anything about that magnet? Tell me if you see anything about that magnet. I got a little bit too much nit nitrogen there. I actually stuck my finger in it, and I didn't, didn't lose my finger. How about that? It was cold, though. It burned. Okay. Hmm. Got too much nitrogen. Anybody see anything about that magnet? Flat gold to cube. What do you notice about this magnet thingy? Can you see it? Do I need to turn it sideways? I'm gonna get closer. Oh, you can't see it anymore. Hang on. How's that? There you go. Can you see my floating magnet? I can is even it, come. Is it spinning? It is spinning. It's floating and spinning. I can get, I can try to get a little lower so you can see it better. I'm going to get, I'm going to come down at a lower camera angle here. I might even just lift it up. I'm going to lift it up without freezing my hand off. Let's see here. If I spill it, then that'll just make it more exciting. 
something's supposed to go wrong. There you go. There you go. Yeah, can you see it? Okay, so do we have any idea what's going on here? Let's see. Name of science, floating above the black cool, it is spinning, yeah, it's spinning, not sure why. Right, so, well, it's spinning because I said it's spinning and there's no friction, right? That's Newton's uh, first law. Body in motion stays in motion unless acted on by an outside force, so the outside force would be friction, but this thing's floating, so there's hardly any, okay? But why is it floating? So this black stuff, this black stuff is really cool. So you guys are trying to guess. So this black stuff, Dr. Sessions knows what it is. What is it, Dr. Sessions? I do. It's yttrium barium copper oxide. It's this weird ceramic material made of rare earths, which has the property of being something called a high temperature superconductor. So this is a superconducting ceramic and superconductors, in addition to conducting electricity with no resistance, can't stand magnetic fields, partly because in order to create a magnetic field, you actually need, um, need a current, and they're, they're really good at, uh, at carrying currents. So they, if, a mag if you try to create a magnetic field in a superconductor, it actually makes another current to prevent the magnetic field from happening. And the result is it, it makes a perfect propulsion for any magnet you put near it. And so uh, that's what it's doing. And you would call it a, a high temperature superconductor. It doesn't look very high temperature to me, okay? Liquid nitrogen is 77 degrees above absolute zero, but it counts as high temperature because I said I could be your grandfather. When I was your age, we had superconductors too, but our superconductors only superconducted at like two degrees above absolute zero. So you needed liquid helium to do it. And so you couldn't do it with coffee cups on a, on a card table like I'm doing it. You needed real fancy equipment. High temperature superconductors are really cool. And if we could get room temperature superconductors, then it's, you know, levitation trains without cooling. You can already use this to levitate a train. And uh, they're using it for, um, uh, uh, Loss, lossless transmission of electric power, but if we could get to the next step of room temperature, then we, we're really there. And then if we had transport parent aluminum and transporters, we could do Star Trek, which is of course what every physicist wants. So that's it. So you can watch this, the thing spin. If there's something you want me to try, let me know, and then we can go back to questions or Liz is asking how expensive um, that ceramic material is. Right, so you can get your own home kit for a couple hundred bucks, um, maybe cheaper on eBay, I don't know. And, and then you can get liquid nitrogen from a welding store. If they let you have it, you have to convince them you're not gonna hurt yourself. Uh, oh, good question, all three ceramic pieces needed. See, physicists mess around, okay, so so if you do it with one, let's try it. Okay, let's do the experiment. You could actually do it with just one, but it floats higher if you have more. So that's why I'm doing it with more. So I'm, t I'm doing your experiment for you. I'm taking out two of the pieces and just leaving the one. And now I'll put the magnet back and it still floats. Oh, it's real good actually, look at that. It's going sideways. If you actually wanted to buy this experiment, you can find a cheap one for about 80 like 90 bucks on amazon yeah and then you just need the liquid nitrogen yeah which is dirt cheap yep that's what's cool about it it's about the same price as milk <laughs> the temperature is also cool oh uh, it is <laughs> so good 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 job um mary boson i can remember boson that's not your name though Bonzon. Bonzon. Oh, so, okay, so as a future, so are you in fact a future physicist, Mary Bonzon? I hope so. Oh, excellent. Well, so we could call you Boson now, right? Uh, okay. 
so yeah, that's it. I'll just uh, I'm I'm here if anybody wants to talk. But they, our students are here um, because you can believe them because they're more like you than than us strange professors. Oops. So does anybody? But I actually all. Oh, Go ahead, Dr. Sonnenfeld. No, I, I I should I'll stop talking. I was just going to ask if anybody has any questions. Oh, are scientists close to making the ceramic room temperature? I think they're working on it, but I don't I don't know what the status state of the art is. Dr. Sonnenfeld, or any of our well, we're getting closer. I think the record is something like 150 Kelvin, which is pretty darn good, but it's not room temperature. Uh, also, nobody, there is no theory. There is no theory of why high temperature superconductors work. There is a theory for the low temperature stuff, mm -hmm. but if you had a theory, then you would, would do a better job maybe designing a material. Um, so we're not there yet, so there's plenty for you guys to do. Um, so um, Mary is asking if it matters if you use either side of the ceramic. Oh, cool. Okay, we'll try it. Okay, does the ceramic or not it has whether or poles. not it has poles? Yeah. Yeah. So it's called. A, so I'm t I'm turning it upside down. Whoop! I spilled it. Okay, I turned it upside down for you, and I'm going to add some more because I spilled it. Okay, I add too much. So I turn it upside down and I'm going to put it up. And it still works. It's um, it basically makes a mirror image magnet. So whatever the magnet's doing, it makes a mirror of it, an equal and opposite mirror. It is, Mr. O o o Ochoa says it's pretty amazing. It is, and it's like okay. So I, this I was trying to stop myself, but when I was a kid, I always messed with stuff and broke stuff, and so now I get to do that professionally. Breaking stuff is where all the learning happens, right? You learn more from when something doesn't go right than you do when it does. Yeah. Actually, I want to ask how many of the prospective students have ever stuck their fingers in an outlet? <laughs> <laughs> we could... I've, told, I've told other other people to do it so I can see what happens without actually hurting myself. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So how many of the physics club have done it? Me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not yet. And yeah. And did you do it twice to make sure it happened the second time? You got to check both holes, right? That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I, hand, I. I stuck my hand in the Windsor machine. Um, that <laughs> hurt. It's basically the same thing. <laughs> Well, I think our incoming physicists are, are uh, maybe a little bit more careful than, than we were, but um, that, that, that's good. Some of us work with lightning, so um, you can hurt yourself. I'm a theorist, so I really have to just avoid the paper cuts. But I think you've stuck, I think you told me you stuck your finger in a socket, Dr. Sessions. Um, I don't think that was me. At oh, least okay. Not intentionally. Oh, okay. All right. So do any, does anybody have any questions about the experiment, about life at tech? Um, not just yet, it doesn't look like. Um, right, well, also, I think they could be shy. So let's just, let's just give them time. I, I would have been really shy. Just, just full disclosure, I, I would have probably about physics conferences, yeah. Does does somebody want to speak up about physics conferences? They are a lot of fun. Ah, favorite tech or department tradition? Okay, as far as organizations, there's the American Physical Society. That's the main physics um, society or organization. Uh, there's also the American Meteorological Society and the American uh, the Astrophysical Association. What is the which one is that? American American Geophysical Union, right? American AGU. Geophysical. There's also astro an astronomy uh, equivalent. Right, American Astronomical Society, right. That yeah. one, yeah, that one, that right. one. And so there's, there's, also, there's conf Sorry. 
the society the society for physics students sps that's uh, something that we work with a lot and and the, the 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 american physical society has has different sections and one of them is a is they have um regional sections and so one of them is the four corners uh, section regional conference and I think a lot of our our students um, travel and participate in that and we've hosted that at New Mexico Tech too. Yep and Jake Jacob Ochoa said how often do you get to do fun experiments and what are the classes like so that's why we have all these students here so I'll let you guys answer it. Uh, uh, if you join the oh, you go ahead I'm not I'm not oh. like technically <laughs> students so you go ahead and say uh, for the experiments you get to go straight into it in your freshman um, year um, in physics one you get to do a bunch of mechanics based experiments you do some projectiles and some cool stuff physics two in the spring you get to do a lot of electricity and magnetism wiring um, you get to look at some lasers and stuff too and I haven't been to those classes yet but the higher ones they just get more advanced you get to see more things like simulations mess with even higher powered lasers stuff like that I know for um, sophomore level labs, you work with uh, radiation and optics, so you can do like spectroscopy, where you put like hydrogen and then you have a telescope and it shows the spectral lines and colors. That was always my favorite because I'm an optics and spectroscopy nerd, but you also do, um, in sophomore year, you also do a coding lab where you um, code and model things in Python, but it's also really fun and it's very informative. Um, that I think they're really fun. And also if you do become part of the physics club, we always have things going on. So um, every couple of weeks we'll bring in something like, like the, the, um, some of the, the machine with the jumping rings um, that Dr. Sonnenfeld showed you, we bring that in. Um, so, you know, if you become part, of us too you'd also do some more stuff we have a giant tesla coil we've fried a couple of projectors with that thing in the past whoops <laughs> um yeah the classes um they start out fairly easy and you're basically going over mechanics and electricity and magnetism I would say two or three different times with successively more in depth uh, so you start with your freshman classes and then you do it again in sophomore uh, and you find out that everything you did in your freshman classes wasn't exactly what reality is <laughs> Uh, so you learn it again, and you learn it in more depth, and it, it builds off of itself, and it becomes, by the time you get to senior year, and you're doing thermodynamics and quantum mechanics, and uh, it, it is really, it's not the easiest, but it is a lot of fun, and it's definitely worth it. I think I also have to say about the classes. Um, the classes are fairly small to what you compare to other universities. So you know everybody in the class, you know the professor, like face to face, you can talk to them. Um, you don't really have to worry about like 100 student plus class. You really get hands on experience with the small class sizes. Yeah, I think there's eight people in my class, in my graduating class. It's a uh... You definitely get one on, you get to know your professors, you know, on a first name basis. It's, it's pretty awesome. For uh, my Astro 2 class, there was me and my friend Cameron. It was just us. And we just had one-on-one -on -one interaction with one of the other professors, Dr. Hoffner. And it wasn't really like a class. It was like a semester long conversation about astronomy. Uh, I, I just want to interrupt just long enough uh, for students who haven't completely figured out all the Zoom stuff, and that includes me. So if, if, the, if they still have my magnet pinned to their screen, what do they do to switch so that they can see the ones talking? Should they, what do they click? Uh, so if it's zoomed in, if they look at the top uh, left, there's like a little, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it says unpin video, and if they just click that, it'll unpin it. Okay. Right next to her it says recording and the shield and the little eyes in the circle. 
You can also right click again and it'll give you an unpin option. That too. I actually One thing found about, uh -oh. I, Go I ahead, found a video of the, uh, the air cannon firing if you guys would like to see that. Uh, Liz Lyons asks, how do students sign up for Physics Club? Uh, so every every semester we have a club fair in the Fidel Atrium. Um, and you just come by and put down your name, your email address, and then we decide on a time to meet, usually like Mondays or Fridays uh, after classes. So that's pretty much how we do that. Um, and then that way you get the emails telling you when the club meetings are and all the news and stuff. Oh, uh, do you see, do you see the question there? If they're still off campus, how do you still plan on meeting? Um, I'm not entirely sure. The officers and myself are going to be meeting at the end of summer to try and work out some of these logistical issues. So stay tuned. Yeah, actually, I'm glad you brought that up. So uh, we are, you know, planning on opening, I'm going to switch cameras back. We're planning on opening to have, you know, so that you can come to class, uh, but we're keeping a Zoom option open in case students just feel you know, too concerned to come to class. So we're gonna offer every class both live and online. Uh, it's challenging, um, but we're, that's, that's what we're working on doing. And you've gotten a communication, you should have all gotten a communication from our president, who's actually a pretty good guy. Um, and if you have questions, uh, you can ask Dr. Sessions or I, you, uh, if you know how to spell our name, which you can see on the screen, all, all email addresses actually, uh, in a sense, they're boring because they can't be weird, but it also makes it easy to reach people. So if you spell my name, it's richard.sonnenfeld at nmt.edu. Dr. Sessions is saren.sessions. The students that you saw, like Anna Smith, she would be anna.smith at student.nmt.edu. So uh, you, could, you could ask uh, questions. And you should all have advisors by now that you could ask. Absolutely. I also, oh, oh, sorry. I, I'd also like to encourage, you know, uh, if anybody's not a future physics major, you are just as welcome. And uh, I definitely want to reach out to you specifically if you have any questions about other programs or other questions. I wanted to mention that um, Dr. Sessions has also signed up to participate in our Ask Tech Anything uh, program, which is held uh, within Discord. Um, and she's scheduled to um, be a part of that program on Thursday, July 2nd. So if you join us then, uh, you can ask her questions. And I mean, that's the whole point of, of that session is to ask questions. And we'll also have um, one of our famous physic alumni join her during that session too, um, Nikisha Johnson. So um, if you guys don't have any questions now, but you think of some later, uh, you can certainly attend that event too. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Let's give people just a couple more minutes in case they think of something and, and then I guess we're winding down, but um, often people, you know, don't think of stuff right away. So one thing I do want to say is um, physics is, like, you need a strong foundation in math. Math is like very important. Like sometimes uh, what I recommend is like either have a good sense of calculus by the time you go into uh, physics one and two. So from then you already know what some of the equations are. So when you're, you're taking a sophomore level classes, you already have that strong foundation of calculus and everything you went over in physics one and two. And that would help you on in, the, in those upper classes as well. Um, and just taking more math classes won't help, won't, wouldn't hurt either. If you take linear algebra, many physics majors uh, 
to phys uh, math minors. And that's also very helpful. The more math you get, the you learn, it's, it's very beneficial for later on in higher level classes. Um, I myself am a double major in math and physics. And so sometimes I'll be doing uh, Calc 3 and be like, oh yeah, we're learning Green's theorem. We're also learning Green's theorem and uh, physics, uh, physics 2. And so you're like, oh, okay, this is pretty cool. And how all those work. And, and so it's, it's nice to see math like in action. And so, but. Yeah, so generally um, when you take your physics classes, they're gonna be ahead in terms of math. So you'll get to learn all the tools you need to get through it, but it's definitely really helpful. And there's, there's two more questions. There's uh, uh, Mary and Hannah B B B bon Bozon, Bonzon. Okay, now I can see the whole thing. They ask um, if there's a link that can be shared because they wanna share this with other people. And maybe Liz will know that. And uh, and Jacob Ochoa wants to watch last week's one. Okay, so do you want to tell people how to get to Discord, Liz? Because I, I don't know, but maybe the students are supposed to know. So each of the incoming students should have been contacted by one of our peer mentors and invited to join. Um, if you don't have an email from a peer mentor, you can send me an email at osl at nmt.edu and we can get you connected with one of our peer mentors. And once you are connected, they will provide you with instructions on how to get on there. The people who want, if someone wants to watch these, uh, who's, uh, you know, hasn't even applied to tech, can they be showed like a YouTube link? Or do yeah. you have to be, yes? Yes, sorry. <laughs> we're, we're also gonna post these uh, videos on our website, the peer mentor website. And I'm gonna share it with the presenters too. So if you wanna post it on your uh, department's website, you can do that too. All right. Yep, well, and I think you should share it with uh, Mary and Hannah uh, Bozon, Bonzon too, since they already asked. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Um, everybody who, who came and thank you Physics Club for, for being here and Dr. Sonnenfeld for your experiments. Um, yay, <laughs> physics. Yeah, come I, join us. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate it. This has uh, been a really awesome tech spotlight. I, I really enjoyed it and I know what the students did too. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Thanks everybody for help for coming coming together. It was nice and to see yes. you guys. Oh, Elizabeth Kwan, oh. Elizabeth Kwan suddenly showed up. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hi Elizabeth. <laughs> Maybe she showed up while she was leaving. Yeah, okay. Well. Okay, well, right. I think we're Bye. good, right? Yep. I think so. All right. Bye, Erin. Thank it's you. So nice seeing you. It was good seeing you too, Liz. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. See you guys. See ya. Have a good rest of your summer. <laughs>